as far as the calendar is concerned, the calendar that they created, and it's a very effective calendar, the Babylonian calendar was used almost universally in the Western world, actually all over the world, until late Roman times. And the Babylonian calendar is still used by the Jews. It's the Jewish calendar. So the Jewish calendar is the Babylonian calendar, which is the Sumerian calendar. It is also the same calendar as the Chinese use for the Chinese ritual year. And what happened with the Western world, and now the whole world, is that uh, they adopted the Egyptian calendar, which we'll discuss also later on. And the Egyptian calendar was used in Egypt, and then it was adopted by the Romans, and then it was adopted by the Western world, and finally took over the whole world. What's interesting is that we know that writing began in Sumer in 3200, between 3500 and 3200 BC, and was fully developed by 3000 BC, and was used by many people in that region. As I said, the Sumerian Babylonian system of cuneiform writing was used for many languages. And by the way, recently, by something like 10 years ago, they discovered another cache of 25,000 tablets written in cuneiform someplace near Aleppo in Syria, at a place called Tel Mardikh. They discovered this is it's fascinating. It dates from 25, 2600 BC, same age as the Great Pyramids of Egypt. 900 years before Hammurabi. It's written in Babylonian cuneiform, but it's a different language. It's not Babylonian. It's not Hebrew. It's somehow, it's something in between or close to both of them. But because it's a Semitic language, the scholars found no difficulty in translating it and now publishing these documents. But uh, the cuneiform system was then being used all over from Iran to Egypt by 2500 BC. Now, the earliest Chinese writing, and this is by any, by any historical measure, the earliest Chinese writing is 1400 BC. That is a good uh, thousand years, uh, 1500 years later than the origin of cuneiform. So the earliest Chinese writing is 1400 BC, and it appears on what they call oracle bones bones, and they used to write symbols on it, uh, which told the future and so on. But this is all the earliest, 1400 BC. There are other things that are interesting, and that is that it seems that the horse, which came from Central Asia into Sumer sometime around 3000 BC, and the horse in Sumerian is called the donkey of the mountains. They have a different name for it. They knew the donkey, but the horse was new. Uh, they call it the donkey of the mountains. The horse comes into China also at a later period. So there are elements of Chinese civilization which the earliest, the earliest the Chinese civilization can go back is uh, 4,000 years. In other words, 2000 BC. It can't go back further than that. And whether it was influence of the West would be only speculation. Chinese civilization, of course, developed to a very high degree, and there are many elements that were they were far superior to the West. But this is about the year 1000, Middle Ages, and so on. In European Middle Ages, China was far superior to, to Europe in the Middle Ages, far superior in science and technology and many other things. For example, we know uh, the great supernova of 1054 in July of 1054, there was an explosion in the sky, and a great big star appeared we call the supernova, which created the Crab Nebula. The only record of that is, is in Chinese astronomy. So there was no record of it in European astronomy. Why? I don't know. I've been arguing about it for a long time. So I said to one of my astronomer friends, you know, maybe, maybe the skies were cloudy in Europe. <laughs> He said, yeah, but this was July, and you know, even in Europe, the skies clear up in July, and, and the, the, the star was visible for something like two weeks or more than two weeks. Bright, brilliant, new star. Well, that's why it was called a nova, but it was a supernova. And the word nova, of course, is, is Latin for new. So a nova means a new star. 
and it means an explosive, exploded star. And, well, anyway, um, Europeans didn't observe it, and maybe at that time, Europeans in 1054, I don't know, they, they simply were not observing. Well, they didn't make a record of it, but the Chinese did. They made a very clear record of it, exactly when it happened.